this example. I'm going to be showing you how you can get data from a spreadsheet and you could use it as a database and you can even output it in a web app using the ID to retrieve back the data that's associated with that ID value. So I've added the ID value of one. So this is going to return back this row of content within JSON format. And that's all being done using Google Apps Script. Let's select the data that we have within the Google Sheet. So first of all, make sure that you select the sheet and then we're going to select the spreadsheet sheet by the sheet name. So that's going to be users. So getting the get user info, it's going to require a parameter of an ID and that's going to return back the sheet user. So first of all, let's uh, go ahead and we're going to set the ID value and this is going to be the spreadsheet ID. So actually I'm going to distinguish it from the other ID. So that's going to be S ID and then selecting the sheet that we want to get the data from using the spreadsheet app service. Then we open by ID. This is where we use the S ID and we want to get the sheet by name and the sheet that we're referring to is going to be the users sheet. And we can also uh, then also get the data range as well. So let's uh, get the data and selecting the sheet object get. And this is actually get data range. So it's going to select all the contents and then get the values. And I'll just slice it at one. And the reason I'm doing that is it's going to remove out the headers. Within the logger log, let's see what we've got for data. So that should return back an array of the data values. And that's going to not include the heading information because we don't want to be returning back any IDs for the headings. We don't have any IDs for the headings. So we want to loop through the data and using for each. So that's going to return back each row of content. And we've got the ID within the column number C or column number three. So it's going to have an index value of two. So within the logger log, this uh, will return back all of the index values or the ID values that we have for the users. And we just have a condition here that if the element two is equal to the ID value, and we'll just do the two equal signs there. So it's not going to be absolute. And if it is, then we're going to return back some values within an object format. Uh, so including the name, and that's going to be the contents of the first column there. So L zero with index value of zero and the email of the user. And that's going to be within L one. And of course, if you change the structure, then you're going to have to update how this is being returned back. And then the ID, and we actually are going to know the ID, but we're passing that in anyway. And if we want status, we can also return that back as L three. So let's uh, try it out and create a function. And this is just going to be tester and we'll log out and we get the user info and let's pass in a value of three. And so we want to create a response and the default response is just going to be null. And instead of doing a return here, we're going to update the response object because this is going to continue to iterate through and it's going to just overwrite it. So we want to return back whatever the response is. So let's run tester and we see what we get back. So we can select the user this way through the tester application. So let's create it as a web app and this will be do get and we're going to get the parameters. We need to get the e parameters. Just, uh, we're going to create the web app and within the web app, well, we're going to return back the content service. And here we're going to create text output. And the output that we're creating, it's going to come from a variable, we'll just call it output. And then we're going to update that. And we can also set the meme type of the output. So if we do want to return back from the content service and the meme type that we want to return back, we can specify it as JSON. So that was a typical way that we can output data into our web application. And here we'll have the output object and this can be structured by name and in order to deploy the web app so we can go under the top right hand corner new deployment select type as web app and then i'm going to leave this open to anyone so we can copy the output url stringify the output so have it as data 
So return the object as data, and then we'll stringify that data object for the output. And let's go over to the test deployment. And within the test deployment, we can see that we're outputting the data properly. So copy the web URL for the output of your web app, and this is the dev version, so it's gonna have a dev at the end. Just give it a question mark and ID three. So that will give us an option that we can return back the data so we can get the user information depending on what the E parameters is. So check to see if we have some values within the E parameters. And if we do, then we can update the value of data. And if ID is there, then this can construct our output. And this is gonna have an index value of zero. So this is gonna return back a value there to the get user information. And we're gonna get the user information using the value there's nothing returned, then we'll just leave it at null. Otherwise, we're gonna set it up as data. And so now it's returning it back via the ID, and this is issuing the response back from the Google Sheet. So according to the data that we've got within the Google Sheet. So once you have that working in the testing environment, so now you're ready to relaunch it. And now you should be able to use the URL and return back the content from the sheet as JSON data using the ID.